Welcome to the Sugar and Spikes podcast, a podcast for entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and anyone ready to uplevel their career in their own damn way. I'm Des. I'm a life coach for a woman who get that having it all sometimes means having to balance the good and the bad, the sugar and the spikes, and all the in-between. And I'm Tammy. I'm a therapist, and I'm all about helping as many people as possible to build awareness and make meaningful changes in their lives. I'm also dedicated to diversity and inclusion and increasing access to mental health care. Between the two of us, we have four master's degrees and thousands of hours helping people develop balance, confidence, and clarity on their terms. So let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Sugar and Spikes podcast. I am Des. And I'm Tammy. And today I'm pretty excited to talk about something that's actually been bugging me a little bit um and it's it's about this idea of i guess like peer pressure in business and peer pressure as an entrepreneur and really doing all the things that you feel like well everyone else is doing this so i need to do it too yeah i mean that can be a huge thing it's not just an entrepreneurship right but Mm -hmm. i mean that's what we're going to talk about today but i mean we see that all over the place so why Mm -hmm. wouldn't we see that here yeah and so this this came about because someone that i follow online started talking about one very specific topic and was kind of going down this like very narrow road of business and i was texting with someone else and i was like God help me, like, I think I'm going to actually do that. Like, I think I'm going to follow down that path. Mm -hmm. And then the person that I was texting with was just like, "Mm, well, I mean, you could. Or, you like, if you know that it's actually not for you, then you can kind of shut yourself off from it and opt to ignore it and all that stuff. Like, unfollow it. So then you stay true to you and your business versus doing something that you know is not going to work out. Um, and I think that that type of situation is a lot more common than people are willing to let on, Mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. And I think that it's really, really fascinating because as entrepreneurs, like we started this thing to do our own thing and then we quickly, quickly fall into the, well, everyone else is doing this, so I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. I know, Mm -hmm. almost without even meaning to, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so easy to just, I think, because there might, I I would think that there's this idea that, like, if that's kind of this model that works, Mm -hmm. then, I mean, you and I have talked about this before, like, why am I going to reinvent the wheel when I can follow steps that have already been laid out and, like, are there for a reason? People Mm -hmm. do these things for a reason. Um, And... I kind of think it's probably also related to like imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, well they seem like they have all the answers. They seem like experts, whoever they is in this scenario. And so I'm going to do it the way they are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's something, there's definitely something to be said for looking at something that has worked, something that people find to be good and positive and learning from that. That's not, that's not a bad thing. Um, like in grad school and everything, we, we studied case examples. We studied case examples religiously. Mm -hmm. I wrote so many goddamn papers about big companies that I feel like I can tell you the the ins and outs of like Coke, Budweiser, and Disney in my sleep. I know, right? Um. (laughs) Borders books. Oh my God. (laughs) If anyone even remembers what that is. Good job, good job dating yourself right there. No, because we had to do a whole it was paper about it going on out it. of business. Mm. Not because I'm old, but because they made us do a paper on it. I but do remember. So I do remember going to Borders because <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I am old. Mm. Um, what was I saying? Oh, okay, case studies. Sorry. <laughs> so in grad school, case studies totally a thing. So it's not it's not new. This idea of yeah. like mimicking and not necessarily mimicking but learning from people. What is new and what is concerning and where I'm just like why is this happening is the idea of like following blindly. 
Mm, like uninformed. Yes. Yeah. And in like in the marketing realm for a lot of especially um, like coaches and even um, service based businesses like designers and stuff. There's a lot of, well, here's how I did this. Here's how I branded this company in three days. And it was, it was how I streamlined all the things and blah, blah. Let me teach you how to do that. Yeah. Here's how I signed all of these clients. Here's how I increased my Instagram. Here's how I did X, Y, and Z. And then selling these strategies and formulas without space for critique or like actual thought yeah like some critical thinking Mm -hmm. right like i think about and i know that you know this like when they're teaching you how to do therapy Mm -hmm. there is this pushback against showing you how to do it rather than making you practice it Mm -hmm. so that you develop your own style and your own way Mm -hmm. of doing it rather than doing exactly what you're talking about which Mm -hmm. is here's my first supervisor and i do it like them because that's the way i saw them do it and Mm -hmm. rather and it's a i will say that's a really hard and scary place to be because Mm -hmm. you're like am i doing it right i don't know and everybody's Mm -hmm. just like oh it's fine and and it's it's really hard to do it that way Mm -hmm. and so i think you see that in business where you're like well this person did it this way so i'm gonna try that Mm -hmm. because you're just starting out you don't really have your feet under you in terms of like messaging marketing branding Mm -hmm. you just have very often this idea Mm -hmm. and you haven't worked out all those moving pieces yeah and so it becomes a little bit easier not because you don't want to think about it, but because you're a little bit lost yeah. that you're going to go with something that sounds, well, that sounds like a good idea. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there's something to be said for it, but putting all of your eggs in one basket and then when you want to stand out, like when you follow all of these systems and everything, then when you go to stand out from the crowd, you can't because mm-hmm. you followed all the systems. So congratulations. You've built a mini me business. Essentially. Yeah, you look like everyone else, yeah. right? Like what makes you stand out? What makes you unique? Yeah, no, I get that totally. And that's the thing. Like that was one thing that I struggled with a lot when I was starting out in terms of like freebies and everything, because the free stuff, the lead magnets, all that fun stuff is like, here's how I do X, Y, and Z. And even with, you know, my membership clients, like the folks that um, subscribe to the Leadership Society and everything, like I don't do those processes because I know that every process looks different for each company. Yeah. Like I have basic facts and theories and an understanding of stuff of like I I have a solid theoretical understanding of marketing and Mm -hmm. what makes marketing work but that theory when applied to a roofing business versus a t-shirt business versus a coaching business it's going to be completely different totally so like i think it's important to think about general principles and things that work Mm -hmm. but then tailored it to each person yeah kind of like therapy right like yeah like therapists are basically all doing the same thing in mm-hmm. different ways, if exactly. that makes any sense. And so like the way I do it versus the way someone else would do it, or like, let's say you and I are both coaches, the way you coach versus the way I coach, mm-hmm. same principles, but putting it into practice in different ways, that's more mm-hmm. authentic to us. Yeah. And when you end up doing it someone else's way, it could work. I mean, it's not to say that it wouldn't work. Like with business, with mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, like you could follow someone else's method and it and could get really good results and it could work. Yeah. However, um, you could do it in, you could make tweaks or make adjustments or it could also feel really inauthentic to you. Mm-hmm. So you're doing it, but yet you kind of feel meh about it or you yeah. kind of feel like this isn't really like me in some way like Mm -hmm. that or maybe it's just this general like i can't quite put my finger on it but there's something about this like i just don't dig and like trying to figure it out but being Mm -hmm. a little bit lost that way you know what i mean yeah i think that i think that's a really really good point and i want to i do want to make sure that like we're not just talking super negatively about um about peer pressure and stuff and like trends in business because there are definitely 
positive elements totally i mean nothing's black and white right like that's mm-hmm. kind of our mantra like it's all about the end right yeah. so nothing's ever going to be 100 percent one way mm-hmm. right so let's hear some of it let's well, talk about that side of it well i think that for in terms of peer pressure for following systems and stuff that's something where like i would say i definitely see a yellow light or it's like a yellow flag like a whoa like slow your roll but when it comes to building relationships and like accountability partners and people that will help you stay on track utilizing the idea of peer pressure can be really really beneficial yeah so like accountability you mean yeah yeah so well everybody in my mastermind group has done all of their marketing for today guess i probably should too yeah you know but taking that broad action is going to look different for that one person versus, well, everyone's already sent out emails today. I guess I need to send out an email. Maybe you don't need to send out an email. Maybe it's you need to, like, hop on LinkedIn. Yeah, I think that's a really good example of exactly what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's done their marketing actions today. Mm -hmm. I should do mine too. Yeah. But your marketing actions and their marketing actions are individualized to each other. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. That's an that's a brilliant example, actually. The other the other piece that I do want to touch on is this idea that there's really there's nothing new that's coming out. Like we have a pretty well developed understanding of business, of the way things work, and everything is cyclical. Like I'm I feel like I'm going kind of meta, but like mm-hmm. everything's pretty pretty cyclical and when it comes to following the crowd or leading the crowd in terms of peer pressure, you have that option. Like you can either jump into something and follow along with what everyone's saying. And maybe it doesn't feel authentic, but you're doing the thing that's like cool and hip at the time. Yeah. I can't believe I just used hip like that. <laughs> um, Talk about dating yourself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or all that in a bag of chips, guys. Um... So we're timeless does. Yeah. So timeless. Um, Doing things like that where you're keeping up with the current situation, but it doesn't feel good versus staying authentic to the way that you kind of instinctively know to do business and making tweaks, like going through something, making tweaks so it fits And then watching everything circle around. So then you're set up immediately as a leader in that method. Totally. Like I think about the tone and stuff in a lot of, um, in a lot of groups and in kind of the business development world that I live in. And for a long time, it's been, well, it can be super casual. You can do this. You can do that. You can say the word fuck a lot, X, Y, and Z. And that's what makes it cool. And I appreciated that for a minute, but there was always something where I was like, that doesn't feel right when it comes to business. Mm -hmm. You know, like I got on live stream a year and a half ago and I went on a tangent about how I show up. I put clothes on. I do my makeup. I show up even though I work from home. Whereas a lot of people are like, well, I just live in sweats. Mm hmm. And those, the sweats and working from home thing was a total trend. And now I'm starting to see this like circular, you know, conversation of, well, maybe we need to start treating our businesses like business. And I'm like, I mean, that's what I've been saying for a while. But I, I and I'll say like, I definitely fell into the, I'm just going to go with the flow. Like I didn't stand my ground as much as I could have. Hey guys, Des here. I'm just popping in with a quick message for all of you entrepreneurs and side hustlers out there. Are you ready to grow your business so you have real influence so that when you speak, people don't just listen, they actually do something? Do you want to be able to share your message, product, or service in a way that feels truly authentic to you so you can stand out from the crowd? Are you ready to finally be a true leader in your industry? If so, then it's time you signed up for the free Legendary Leadership Challenge. In just five days, you will be able to define your leadership style, develop a whole new way to view all the things on your to-do list so you're not overwhelmed, create consistent standout content, increase your community engagement and connections like real, actual connections, and redefine self-care so you can keep doing all the things you're made to do. If you're ready to rise up as the legendary leader you know you are, then head on over to DesireeW.com and click on the Legendary Leadership Challenge and sign up today. 
And when you sign up for the challenge, you also get five free days to all of the content in the Legendary Leadership Society. Guys, it's nuts. Um, so if you're ready to learn how to lead your way, take the Legendary Leadership Challenge today. Well, there's nothing wrong with trying on trends, yeah. right? There's nothing wrong with innovation. There's nothing wrong with evolution and mm -hmm. evolving. And you're never going to completely stand still. That would be like business suicide. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing wrong with trying things on and seeing if they fit. No one's saying that. We're not saying that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everyone hears that we're not mm -hmm. saying that. I think what we're saying is if you try it on and you're like, this isn't really for me. Mm -hmm. We're also trying to do some work around and some more kind of intentionality around what do I stand for? What mm -hmm. am I about? And there's some hard work to be done there, whether as an individual or as a business, right? Trying to develop your branding, trying to develop your marketing, trying to develop an authentic business that speaks to who you are, right? Because it's a reflection of you. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that work is difficult and challenging and hard to do. And we can feel kind of lost while we do it. And it's also a process. Mm -hmm. So where you are with your business and what felt authentic to you a year ago, isn't feeling authentic to you now. Yeah. So it's perfectly fine to change that. Yeah. And I would say that like, I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule, but if you find yourself doing the same thing day in, day out, no matter what year after year, I mean, even quarter after quarter, to be quite honest, that's kind of cause for concern mm -hmm. because it shows that there's not a lot of growth. It shows that there's not a lot of reflection because I guarantee you no business is perfect. No strategy is perfect. Oh, no. It can stand to be improved. So improve, refine, look at how you can get to like the next level if that means like easier like workflow, easier strategy things like that like it, the next so level looking at like efficiency yeah. and then looking at what's my message do mm -hmm. i want to expand do i want to increase into these areas exactly. like how do i want to grow and what does that look like mm -hmm. that may not mean like right away like tackling sales that may mean oh i want to like streamline my production model so yeah. that i'm not spending as long doing xyz right mm -hmm. so like internal processes versus external processes and yeah all that. If there's not this continual, continuous evaluation of why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I saying what I'm saying? What is the reason behind all of this? And not in like the deep, like, why do you run a business yeah. situation? Like where I'm, I'm not talking about that, which seems to be what everybody kind of delves into. But the what is the reason for this? Why am I using this language? Why am I why am I using this imagery that I pulled from a year ago? Yeah. So you a know? little more introspection, mm -hmm. a little bit more like, hmm, am I what is my intention behind mm -hmm. this? Right. Does this fit with where the company is right now? Does this fit with where the business is right now? If you're a solo entrepreneur, does this fit with the clients that I work with right now? Or was this something from when everything was just starting out? I think about that. Like we might have even talked about this before, but you and I were talking about that the other mm -hmm. day about some um, pictures and some stuff mm -hmm. in regards to marketing. And I was like, well, all this speaks like this to me. And then there's just this one thing that kind of seems out of place. And you were like, oh, because that's from last yeah. year, this thing we were doing last year. And I'm like, oh, OK, so we should change that mm -hmm. piece. Right. And so um, but we had a conversation around that. Yeah. So it, there's nothing wrong with having used it before or mm -hmm. even using it again, but like thinking about why are we using that image? Why am I using that saying? Why mm -hmm. am I using that sales copy or whatever I, yeah. it is I'm doing? Um, and does it really fit with where I am mm -hmm. right now? And this isn't to say that you have to be constantly reinventing the wheel. No. Nope. That's not what we're saying. Nope. Because if you've done solid, um, like solid branding, solid purposing if you've done the core work to build a business a lot of things are going to stay the same like the website that we have right now is the same website from a year and a half ago with updated imagery mm -hmm. the the things that we do are still in the same vein but we've branched out and we've enhanced and we've done like we've made tweaks yeah you know, and it's been consistent enough where maybe we've pulled something down or like I've pulled copy down for a while and then 
needed to put another page up and been like, well, I don't want to start from scratch. I go to that other copy, I tweak it a bit, and it's like 80% the thing that was up a year ago. Yeah. But just in like in the place where it should have been, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's not about constantly, well, I need to rebrand. I need to do this. I have to... No, that that's not what we're saying. Just be thoughtful. Get, yeah, just be thoughtful and aware of what's going on and how how you're growing and making sure. I think the one thing that I do want to say is making sure that as an entrepreneur, you are deciding what your business looks like and that it's not being influenced by the masses. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. I think I hope that's what people hear in this. I hope people aren't hearing like 100% originality all mm-hmm. the time, like totally redoing everything all the time. Yeah. No, it just like speaking to just a little bit more like thoughtfulness mm-hmm. about your business because it should be thoughtful. It's a reflection of you and mm-hmm. like you put your heart and soul into it. So mm-hmm. whatever you're it's like it's like food, right? Yeah. You want to put healthy food into your body. Mm-hmm. You want to put healthy ideas into your business. What if it, let's play that out because I like that. So if we think about it in terms of food, like what stuff is your business allergic to? Like maybe it's stuff Ooh. that your business ate for a long time. Maybe your business was eating up Facebook ads like there was no tomorrow. And then you realize your business gets a rash. Yeah. And then it's or like, or the well, fad diet worked for a while, yeah. but now you've hit a plateau. Exactly. Yes. And then it's time to reevaluate. Yes. And when it comes to diet and everything, like you're not going out and finding all new food. You go back to, well, maybe I need to shift this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like take this one thing yeah. and kind of think about it more deeply. Because really, there are only so many types of food in the world. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like it a lot. That's really good. That's what all my schooling has bought you. <laughs> An example about food. <laughs> Money well spent. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all those hours. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's up to you. Like, it, in the end, it's up to you to decide how you want to manage your business in terms of who's who's ultimately in control because you may be writing the checks you may be making the theoretical decisions but if you're not careful then any voice you hear is going to be the one controlling the business and you're not Mm -hmm. so be careful around that and it's also up to you whether or not you want to be the true influencer because trends circle back around it's like clothing like every few months there's a new trend and it's always like the same style, but in like a reversioned fashion. Um, so do you want to sit through like the awkward period and cling to what you know, which is good stuff, and then be the trendsetter for the next go around? Or do you just want to be shopping at Forever 21 the rest of your life? The rest of your business life. Ugh. No one wants that. No one wants that. I mean, it's just not good for the environment. Nah, no. Yeah. Yeah. So think about who influences you. Like Mm -hmm. what influences you to make that change? Like if you're wanting to make a change, how come? Yeah. You know, just do a little bit, a little bit of um, introspection and awareness Mm -hmm. around it too. Cause we were all influenced. It's not like you can make decisions in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. It's not like, Oh, suddenly I'm not going to be influenced by anything ever. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to try on the trend, try it on. Yeah. And maybe it really fits with you and you love it or maybe not. And then you can move on from it or stay with it, Mm -hmm. but make sure you know why you're doing it. One other piece I want to say, thinking about that in terms of like fashion and everything now is like, if there's something that's going on and you're like, I don't understand why, like that would not work for my business. Like I think jumpsuits, like I've been having this interesting interaction with jumpsuits lately. Okay. Or I mean, how long has it been? It's been four or five years that they've been trendy. Yeah. And I've been like, oh, hell no. And now you're like, no, baby. And I was like looking at Nordstrom and I was like, I mean, maybe like, okay. Well, remember the more we're exposed to things, the more we like them. Fair. That is a, that's, that is true. That's science. Yep. But if there's, if there's a business trend that looks to be, that kind of sticks around and you're like, I'm not sure how that would really fit with my business, but I mean, everyone's doing it. Like it, 
I don't want to say do it because everyone else is doing it. Like, I'm not saying jump off the bridge. What I am saying is, what are they getting out of it? And mm-hmm. what could you learn? So maybe if you think that it's a hideous trend, spend time with it, interact with it, check it out, see how it's working for folks, and then try it on for a minute. And then you can walk away having learned something new, too. Mm -hmm. So we're not even saying don't try the trends. No, no, I've explicitly said try it. Yes, try try the things. But maybe don't don't buy 10 jumpsuits. Yeah. Maybe just try one. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Let's try one first. Uh Uh-huh. So try it on. See what you think. You might love it. Mm Mm-hmm. Or maybe not so much. Yeah, or or you just walk away from the jumpsuit. (laughs) So we've thrown a lot. <laughs> it's food. It's fashion. It's all the things. It's, all, it's business. It's life for entrepreneurs. It's life. Like it's all the things. It's true. So have fun with it. With both food and fashion. And business. And business. It doesn't have to be awful. We want you to have fun with it too. Well, oh, I meant to say like food and fashion. Like have fun with it because it's, it's oh. an essential part. <laughs> and you don't have to go with the flavor of the week. You can stay true. Like, yeah. I mean, in my style, I've worn the same general quote unquote uniform for 10 years. And I talked with my stylist about this and she like signed off saying it was okay. Nice. Skinny jeans, black t-shirt, a blazer. That is like my go-to and I don't think it'll ever change. It'll update. We'll shift things. Maybe a different kind of t-shirt. I'll buy new shoes. But my basic go-to, I have to do something. That's how it is. Perfect. So things change. You can update. You can make small shifts. You can make big shifts. It's all up to you. Just be aware. Yep. Just be cautious and always checking in. Well, what is the reasoning behind it? Yep. Awareness. And if it's because so-and-so just said so, maybe go a little bit deeper. And if it's because, well, we've always done it this way, maybe go a little deeper. Yep. I think that's all. That's all. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, friends. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Sugar and Spikes podcast. If you guys like what we're doing, please subscribe, leave a rating, share it with your friends. It would mean the world to us. If you're not a huge fan of what we're doing, maybe share it with someone you think may like it. If you want to keep up to date on all the Sugar and Spike shenanigans, get the behind the scenes tour of life and business as a millennial female entrepreneur, then follow me across all the social medias. I'm Des W Ms. MBA. D-E-Z-W-M-S-M-B-A across all the platforms, your Facebooks, your Twitters, your Instagrams. I'm there. Same name. And don't forget, if you're ready to rise up as a legendary leader, you know you are, then head on over to DesireeW.com and sign up for the free five-day legendary leadership challenge. Also, I want to thank Forget the Whale for use of their song Move Along as our theme music. And guys, remember to stay unavailable for fuckery. Fuckery.